How's it going there, YouTubers? Danielle Bluestone here. Uh, Monday, March the 14th, uh, 2016. Welcome back to the Magic Bus. Um, today, I'm going to go right back to the basics. I'm going to show you all the tools that I use, talk to you about costs and uh, things like that uh, for you to set up your own uh, paper clay uh, studio or okay here we go so these are the pieces that I've been working on over the last little while um, they came out of the kiln on Saturday and so I'll be spending this week uh, painting them and putting glaze on top and then firing them so I hope you like them I think they're pretty trippy all right that's not bad it's, uh, I got this light here glaring in on my glasses. I don't know. Is there a highlight on the on the lenses here? Sorry about that. I'm not a professional cinematographer, obviously, um, but I just want to put this stuff out there so that so that you know what's what. I'll put the clicker down. So for starters, all right, let's go there. Um, for starters, I got a canvas board here. Uh, this is just, I, I bought uh, a 4x8 sheet of uh, half inch plywood, or yeah, half inch I think, or 3 8 And I uh, just had it cut up into a bunch of pieces, 18 by 24 And then I got some cotton canvas. You want to use cotton, you don't want to use some kind of synthetic, because cotton is going to absorb the water and the moisture from the clay. So. Uh, so yeah, so uh, cotton canvas and just stapled it to the back and I've got like a whole whack of these boards. I've got eight or ten of them. And then here, this is a little turntable uh, that I got from Walmart, I think, uh, called the Lazy, Lazy Susan. And then they're either three or four bucks. Uh, they've got, whoops, there's just a, a bunch of ball bearings and... Uh, and this thing snaps into place like so and there you go there's your nice working space and on top of that what I'll do is put um, a board and this is um, this is just scrap wood it's a, a particle board with uh, melamine on top and uh, then you know newspaper to absorb the water um, on your work. Here's my list. Okay, so uh, yeah, so there's those, and then here you go. This is a piece of dowel uh, for rolling out your slabs. And yeah, here's a dry slab. This is what I've been uh, making all these fairy houses with. Uh, I roll them out as thin as I can, less than a quarter of an inch. Uh, and more than an eighth of an inch, so I would say like three eighths of an inch. That makes it easy to work with, easy to cut, and uh, and once it's fired, it's still really strong. So uh, I'll get to that. Okay. So now uh, let's see. A bucket of warm water. Here's a bucket. Bah! Warm water and towels. Now you can go. To Sally Ann and uh, and ask for uh, a bag of rags. I think they charge eight dollars for a bag of terry cloth towels. And and again, you want terry cloth cotton. You know that's going to absorb. So yeah, for seven eight bucks, they'll give you a great big uh, garbage bag full of um, terry cloth towel rags. Um, good deal. Okay, uh, what else now? Moisturizer for your hands because when you're working with clay, it's going to pull the moisture out of your hands and uh, you'll get, you know, these little thin paper cut type of things that hurt like hell. Um, a piece of dowel, this is inch or inch and a quarter, and you can get it cut to whatever size you want. Um, spray bottle for wetting down your work. Spray bottle. Um, Scotch brights. 
Uh, you know these things, these pot scrubbers? Um, they're terrific for sanding down your pieces and for, uh, for cleaning up texture and stuff. I cut them into thin little strips for getting into small areas. Um, they're terrific. And, uh, and cheap. Cheap like borscht. Um, also on the same subject of uh, sanding and planing and things, um, this here, I'm just wondering how I can uh, display this a little bit better so that you can see. Um, just a sec, let me see what I can set up. Okay, I'm not using the computer for the moment, so I've got a canvas board resting up against the monitor, so I'm going to zoom. I'll take me out of the picture, <coughs> and I'll just... Where's the zoomer? I'm going to zoom right in on the canvas, and then I can put all these tools up against that background, and you can see them real clear. Blades. All right, so here's a planer blade, like that. I'm getting it. There we go. Lovely. Okay. So this is a planer blade. Uh, they're really good for taking down edges and stuff. Um, they're not cheap though. Uh, they uh, you buy them in the hardware store and they and they fit in one of those handles in a Stanley um, hand planer. Uh, but they're about five bucks a piece and they rust. Uh, and when they rust, then, they, then the teeth um, get dull. So as an alternative to the, I mean, they are great. They're really handy. But as an alternative, um, where did it go now? You can go to the dollar store and, uh, which way is my hand going? This way. No, nope, this way. <laughs> yeah, you can go to the dollar store and, uh, or your local thrift shop and find one of these, uh, cheese grater, vegetable grater type things. I've got to zoom out again a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Yeah, so this is, you know, this is just a flat one. It's got some sharp edges, so I would put some duct tape or something around the edges, you know, so you don't uh, uh, poke yourself, cut yourself or something. Um, yeah, and they work just as good, but they're a little more unwieldy than the planer blades. But, you know, then again, they're stainless steel, and so they're not going to rust, and these uh, these uh, cutters will stay sharp a whole lot longer. You know, you can use a flat one like this, or get a box grater that you shred your carrots and stuff with. These are uh, a specialized kind of file, and they're called rifflers. Uh, R-I-F-F-L-E-R. And these ones came from Lee Valley, which is the local uh, uh, woodworking supply. They okay. So it's got like a flat, come on Danielle, it's got a flat end uh, with a point that's good for some stuff and then it's got like a rat tail file end on the other side. And then uh, here's another riffler that's got a curve to it. And they're again, you know, good for getting into small corners and, and things like that. Uh, yogurt containers uh, or whatever. Uh, I got tons of these. I eat a lot of yogurt. Good stuff. Um, and you can cut them down to, you know, smaller sizes like that. In here are all the scrap uh, pieces of paper clay that that get left over from, uh, from pieces while I'm working on them. And you can save these in a bucket and um, when you got when your bucket is full, just pour some warm water over it. Leave it soak for about a day, and it'll break right back down to mush. And then you can rework it and uh, and uh, use it all over again. So save all the little bits and pieces. Um, yeah. Okay. Now is as good a time as any, I suppose. To show you a box of clay. A box of 50 pounds of clay uh, sells for about 35 bucks. Here I am again. Okay, so yeah, 35 bucks for a box of clay. 
um, that comes with two bags full of clay, uh, 50 pounds, and I mean you can make just a ton of stuff with uh, that amount of clay. And I mean if you're used to buying um, Fimo or this other stuff that they call creative paper clay, uh, you're paying too much money for too little stuff. So okay, I'll just grab a box of clay and hope that I don't get a hernia. Just a sec here. Anyway, here you go. Here's 50 pounds of clay. Uh, this is, you'll have to turn your head sideways. Um, this is LF06 paper clay. LF low fire 06 cone 06. And this is made by Seattle Pottery Supply. So, uh, this is great stuff. I love paper clay. Um, if you haven't gathered that by now. Alright, so I'll open this up. So, you got a shitload of clay in here. And okay, well, there's half a shitload. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of clay. You can, you can really make a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So, this, the paper clay comes in a low fire and also a, a medium fire. Um, I'm using a low fire uh, because my kiln, the elements in it are quite old. And uh, the higher that you fire, uh, the faster your elements wear out. And it's about 500 bucks to replace those elements. So I use the low fire. Uh, Whew. Essentially, the the medium fire is the same thing, uh, but you're but it's uh, this stuff is called earthenware. Uh, if you're firing like cone six to cone ten, um, then that's going to be high fire. So uh, if we're talking about degrees Fahrenheit, this stuff fires at about sixteen seventeen hundred degrees Fahrenheit, and um, uh, a stoneware fires at about maybe 22 to 2500 degrees so it's a significant difference and like I say it wears out your elements pretty quick so if you don't have a kiln uh, you can usually find them on the buy and sell in your local area uh, or failing that uh, lots of high schools and rec centers um, have kilns where you can fire your work uh, for a fee or uh, in some cases you can take a pottery class and uh, once you've taken the class then you have access to the studio and to uh, having firings there so there's a couple of ideas for you all right i'm going to move this out of the way zoom back in on the canvas board Yeesh, this is wet okay this is a clay gun. They uh, just to be trippy. They they uh, spell it K L A Y uh, clay gun. Um, I just about freaked the other day when I was at the pottery supply and I was going to buy another one. They want twenty six dollars for one of these now, and I think the first one I bought I paid maybe five bucks for. So so things are you know things are getting stupid. Anyway, this one's got uh, a round hole in it, and uh, just to uh, to justify the 26 bucks that they're charging you, they come with um, <laughs> they come with a whole bunch of little ends like this, you know. Whoops, one of them fell on the floor. Um, that are you know all kinds of trippy shapes. There's like a clover shape and. A, triangle and uh, yeah and uh, a mesh uh, uh, if you don't want to spend 26 bucks on a clay gun you can always get a plastic syringe like this one and cut the end off it and you can still squish uh, uh, strips of clay out so if you've seen some of the fairy garden houses um, uh, the trim around the windows are, are just uh, from one of these. And if you don't, if you don't have a pen tool, you can always use a ballpoint pen or a pencil. Um, 
It doesn't have to be, you know, fancy, uh, but they're handy. And then I got all these little diggy tools. Um, here's one with a lance on the end and, and a curved uh, end here. These are great. These these are essential. They're about five bucks a piece at your pottery supply, but you definitely need them. Um, Here's one with a diggy, uh, uh, a thin diggy on one end and another, another one on the other end. Uh, here's one with an exacto blade and a diggy on the other end. Now you can sharpen these, uh, but when you do sharpen them, uh, you shorten the life of them. Um, I found that I can use uh, one of the cutting wheels on a Dremel. Um, just gently to sharpen the point so that they continue digging. So here's here's a few brushes. Um, that one's a Chinese ink brush. Uh, they're very cheap. Uh, I think that's a dollar store brush. And these two are old sables um, left over from watercolor. So. Uh, beyond that, let's see. Um, I think I've covered just about most of it. Oh yeah, uh, these ribs. All right. So here's a rib that you get from a pottery supply. Again, these are good for shaping, and they're also good for um, like cleaning off your table. You know, uh, getting all the, the dust and crap out of the way. They're great. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can take a lid off a yogurt container and cut it like so, and it does exactly the same job. In fact, the plastic uh, is even more flexible than the metal ribs, so they're handy too. Um, okay, what else? Oh, for cutting your clay, now, here's a piece of fishing line with just a couple of little clay doodads on the end to, to hold it, you know? Um, and I mean, that'll cut through your clay real easy. If you want to get fancier, um, I bought this thing, which is like a cheese cutter uh, from Amico. And it has a, a movable thing here so that you can adjust the thickness of the slabs that you're cutting. So you need clay slip. So this is just guck. It's uh, broken down um, paper clay dust. Um, and this is the glue. This is what holds everything together. So um, when, you, when you start working with paper clay, you got to make yourself uh, a thing of this guck. And just keep adding uh, you know, little pieces and, uh, and dust from the, from the working surface. And yeah. OK, uh, the last thing that I have on the list is imagination, ingenuity, and passion. Um, yeah. And another time, uh, I'll take you down to the kiln room and I'll show you that uh, big box that I have down there. But yeah, like I say, if you don't have a kiln, um, there's going to be a high school or a rec center in your local area where you can probably get access. Um, okay, so I guess that's going to be it for this one. Um, thanks for watching, as usual. Uh, I'll be editing this tonight and uploading it. And uh, I thank you for watching. And uh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'm a little bit mumbly mouth today, in case you hadn't noticed. But I, you know, I really wanted to to give you an idea of what you need. And I mean, I've you know, I've gone to extremes here. There isn't really a whole lot of stuff that you need to work with paper clay. Um, <clears throat> you know, beyond uh, a canvas board, some towels, and, uh, and and a dowel to flatten out your your clay. Okay. Um, anyway, that's it. Danielle Bluestone signing off. Um, see you next time.